If you want to be able to determine when a function has an absolute maximum or minimum, and that function is a continuous function defined in a closed interval, you're able to use the extreme value theorem. But what if you want to be able to also know when you have a local maximum or a local minimum? And maybe your function isn't defined on a closed interval. Maybe, maybe it's defined in an open interval. Maybe it's defined on all of the real numbers. For that, we're going to need the first derivative test. What the first derivative test asks us to do is it says, stop for a second and think about what your derivative is telling you. If at some point you know that the derivative of your function is positive, so we have a nice continuous function and it has positive derivative. What is that telling you? Well, you can think that whatever your function looks like, your, your tangent line will be pointing with positive slope. And so that tells you at least, at least locally, at least in the immediate area, that function is getting bigger. That is, we'll say that the function is increasing. It's increasing at wherever you're at a point that has positive derivative. So, so the points are getting, the values of the function are getting bigger and bigger and bigger locally. In a similar way, if you're told that your derivative is negative at some point, that's just saying that the slope of the tangent line is going down. So, so, so your function is now pointing downward, so at least locally it's decreasing. It might start going up again somewhere else, but at least right there your function is decreasing. Let's use this insight to analyze a function and begin to see the first derivative test in action. So we'll think once more about, about this function. Let's consider the function f of x is equal to 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 12x and, and then, you know, whatever, say, say minus 1 or something at the end. What we're going to do is in order to understand the... the uh, maximums and minimums, be them absolute or, or, or local, we're going to begin by looking at the, the function, the derivative of this function. So the derivative of the function is 6x squared plus 6x minus 12, which we can factor, again, as just 6 times x squared plus x minus 2, or that's the same thing as 6 times x minus uh, x plus 2 times x minus 1. And, and so we see there are two special values here, two values that make the derivative 0. The values will be a negative 2 or a positive 1. So let me go ahead and, and imagine, imagine a number line. And on this number line, I'm going to specify those, those critical values. When my, when my x is either negative 2 or positive 1, my derivative at x is 0 there. If I also had other values that made it so the derivative didn't exist, I would want to note those as well. But these are the only ones where the derivative is 0. So I'm going I'm to write those down. And then I'm going to ask what happens at the other points on this number line. For example, what would happen, what would happen at some point between minus 2 and 1, some point like 0. Well, I can go ahead and plug 0 into my derivative to find out. If I, if I just plug 0 into this derivative, I get a negative number. I get a negative number, which means at that point 0, the function is, is decreasing. If I, if I was to zoom out a little bit and look at the points around 0, I would see that the values are getting smaller. But it's not just going to be true for 0. Because by the intermediate value theorem, if, if you have a negative value here, it's not going to become positive again until you cross through one of the zeros. So, so since this value is zero, all, since this value is negative, all of the numbers between negative 2 and 1 have a negative value as its derivative. I mean, you could test any of them. You could test negative 1. And if you plug negative 1 into this, you would get a negative number. You could test 0.5 or anything you want to test. Any of these numbers between negative 2 and 1 has to be the same. Since it was negative, it will continue negative until it hits zero. So we only need to really test one number in between it. Similarly, we only need to test one number to the right of one to find out what's going on here. Is it, is it increasing or is it decreasing? So pick some number. It's some number like two. 
plug it into your derivative to see what happens. When I plug 2 into my derivative, I get 2 squared is 4 times 6 is 24 plus 12 is 36 minus 12, 24. That's a positive number. So here at 2, my function is, is increasing. So between minus 2 and 1, my function was decreasing. But then after 1, my function is now increasing. My function is now increasing. And, and then we can do the last region we haven't tested yet. Let's pick some number smaller than minus 2. Pick a number like minus 3. Plug minus 3 into your derivative. You squared becomes positive 9, so 54, minus 18, minus 12, so minus 30. Still, still a positive number. Still positive 24, still a positive number. So it's a positive value, so that's increasing. So your function was increasing. But now let's think what's going on here. If my function was increasing before I get to minus 2, and it's decreasing after I get past minus 2, what must minus 2 be? Well, minus 2, x equals minus 2, must be at least a local maximum. Right? It was getting bigger, and then it's getting smaller, so that must be a local maximum. Similar reasoning, if you, if you look at 1, what's going on at x equals 1, well, it was decreasing before you got to 1, and it's increasing after you pass 1. So if you are increasing, if you are decreasing and then increasing, you, you'll be sitting at the bottom. You'll be sitting at the bottom of some, of some valley. Just like before, you're sitting at the top of some mountain. Now you must be at the bottom of some valley. You must be a local minimum. So that's all it is. The first derivative test is giving you a way to find the local minimums and local maximums of your function. Now it's going to take a little bit more work to figure out is that local maximum actually an absolute maximum or, or is that local minimum really an absolute minimum or does it get smaller somewhere else? But, but at least you know locally this is a, a maximum and this is a minimum.